Welcome. Today we'd like to share a demo of a new tool we've been working on at MathJax. This new tool is a full math accessibility solution built to work with any screen reader. It includes on-the-fly speech text generation, highlighting and exploration of a rendered mathematical equation. Like any MathJax project, this tool is open source and only depending on MathML and standard web APIs. Please note that this is work in progress and various minor and major bugs might occur. However, we are very interested in getting your feedback as early as possible, so please try out our demo and our test page and let us know about any issues you encounter. We are planning the first release to the end of this year, towards the end of this year, that is 2015. For this demo, we are using a standard virtual machine from modern.ie so that you can reproduce these results easily yourself. In this case, it's the Windows, Windows 10 virtual machine for testing Microsoft Edge. Our goal is to enable any combination of screen reader, browser and operating system. Of course, that is very challenging and we have not yet achieved this. For our most recent test results, please see the GitHub wiki page linked to in the notes to this video. In this video, I'll be demonstrating a test page using NVDA and Firefox. You can find the URL in the notes to this video. Both are already running, so you will hear oral output as I access the page. Note that I will mostly cut off this NVDA from talking to keep this video short and focus on the interaction between NVDA and our accessibility tool. Let's get started. First, let's reload the page. Busy. Semantic enrichment for collapsing equations. Great. As you could hear, NVDA is working. The page has refreshed. Let me quickly describe it. There is a text area for tech input, that's for convenient if you want to input your own mathematics, as well as a list of examples ready to use and to easily compare the results across the board. There are also some options for the accessibility tool itself, but I will ignore them in this video. Please feel free to play around with them and let us know how it's going. Finally, there is a dedicated area for the output. Note that I've scaled MathJax to produce a larger output for the purposes of this video. So let's pick one of the examples. And let's pick an easy one, the quadratic Select formula. One. Semantic one. Combo box. Sorry, NVDA, for cutting you off. If you're seeing this, you will have noticed that MathJax has been typeset. To be able to activate the accessibility tool, we need to bring the equation into focus. Since MathJax puts its output into the tab order since version 2.6, all we have to do is tab until we get to the expression. Given the structure of the page, it takes us three tabs from the combo box to the equation. So let's do this. Keep button. Type set button. Clickable math. Great. Firefox actually tells us that this element has a role math. However, that's not always the case with all browsers, and we will implement a more generic indicator so that a user knows if this tool is available. To use the accessibility tool, we actually have to disable m the mode of the screen reader. In NVDA's case, that's called browse mode, and we need to switch to focus mode so that our interactions with the accessibility tool actually occur naturally. In NVDA, this is done with NVDA key plus shift, in my case, that's caps lock with shift. So let's do this. It might not always work given the VM setup, but we'll hear the confirmation sound if it works. Great, you heard the click. If you know NVDA, you know you've switched modes. Now we're ready to activate the tool. To do this, simply hit shift space. If you're not running a screen reader but opening this page, you don't obviously have to switch modes and you can just use shift space to activate the accessibility tool. Space. All right, if you're seeing this, then you'll notice that the equation has been highlighted and that there is actually a text string inserted at the bottom of the page. That last part is just for debugging purposes. It makes it easier for us to see whether the text is being generated and whether it's correct. It's not important. In the actual DOM, what is happening is that we're creating an ARIA life region which gets updated with the relevant current speech string representing the equation the sub-expression of the equation that's currently being um, highlighted and explored. As we explore, you will notice that the highlighting will switch to the correct 
sub-expression. We explore the equation using simply the arrow keys. It's structured in layers or levels. If you want to go up and down to a lower level, you go up and down with your arrow keys. If you want to explore an individual level, you use right and left to explore that level. Since we're at the top level, we can only go down. However, you will notice a first little bug that's NVDA specific. The initial speed string is actually not being voiced, even though the ARIA life region was created. We're hoping to be able to squish that bug really soon. But once we navigate, you will actually hear correct voicing. So let's hit the down button. X. All right. Since we just entered a lower level, we are at the leftmost edge, so we can only turn right. Let's hit the right key. Equals. Start fraction negative b plus or minus start root b squared minus 4 as the end root over 2 end fraction. Great. As you can hear, we've voiced a very complex fraction. If we go further to the right, nothing occurs. We will be implementing an oral cue to indicate that you've reached the edge of the level. Still, this very long fraction is very long, so let's explore it further and go down into the substructure. Negative b plus or minus start root b squared minus 4 as the end root. Right, still a mouthful, but let's switch to the other part of the fraction. 2a. Wonderful. If you're a visual user, you will notice two things. On the one hand, the highlighting actually corresponds correctly to the sub-expression that was being read. This is because we are generating on the fly semantic information that pertains to the semantic structure of the underlying MathML. This way, we don't just highlight the MathML subtree, but we can actually group things correctly. We also can do more because we can actually analyze the structure of the content itself. So in this example, it's for a visual user relatively easy to discern that the A is probably an individual variable, but that's not so clear if you have an oral rendering. So if we go down into the current level, which is 2A, then we actually get additional information generated by our heuristics. Two. And let's go right. Times. A. Great. So there was actually an invisible times that we injected by the semantic enrichment, which allows us to provide a better oral rendering of this sub-expression. Similarly, this happens for other situations. Say, for example, in the upper part of the fraction, there is a B squared, which is read as B squared rather than B subscript, uh, superscript 2. I hope you got a good first look at what you can achieve with this tool. If you want to exit the tool, you simply hit escape and you're back in the usual page and can navigate it in the usual manner. I hope you enjoyed this little demo. This is an example of NVDA on fi with Firefox on Windows 10, but in fact, NVDA works pretty similarly on Chrome, although there are one or two minor bugs there in addition to this initial rendering bug. They work but actually on all Windows platforms from XP through to Windows 10 the same way. So you can use NVDA with Firefox and Chrome reliably. Internet Explorer we're still working on a bit of a difficulty there. And for all the other screen readers that we've tested, please see the GitHub page or look out for more videos on our accessibility tool. Thanks so much for listening.